everyone, welcome back to SIA Speaks. Hi! New academic year. New season. New us? <laughs> sure. Um, if you guys remember last year, the hosts for the podcast were Arwa and Mahnoor. Um, I'm not sure how you'll feel about these, this news, but today, I mean this year, Mariam and I will be hosting this season, which is so exciting. If you remember, <laughs> if you remember us from last year, we had an episode. Anyways, today's topic is so interesting to us. It is all about if embarrassment is even real. And I know this is a really weird question to ask. Like, you're probably thinking, what kind of question is that? Of course, it is real. But Mariam and I have different opinions. So, what do you think is embarrassment? What is the definition of embarrassment? Well, to me, it's just when you feel so self-conscious that you start physically feeling small, smaller than the people around you, and you just feel ashamed. Yeah, it's just like, it's a revolting feeling. Mm -hmm. What, how do you, how would you describe your feeling of embarrassment? Like, just according to you? Feeling small, just, you know, just uh, wanting to disappear in a room full of people, wanting to like, shrivel up and shrink and just yeah just disappear <laughs> to me i think embarrassment is just this feeling of shame like i would love a hole to swallow me up and i just do not want to be here but in this episode we'll be discussing anyways that you can reduce this feeling of embarrassment and if there's anything to help you deal with it so First point, um, may I ask you, when was the first time you felt embarrassed? The first time I've ever felt embarrassed? Oh, actually, I actually remember this. It was in second grade. Shout out to my second grade teacher. No, I actually, actually loved her, but like, let me tell you the story. So I had a really difficult time understanding English, right? Because Arabic is my first language. This was my first English school and my teacher was British. She had an accent and she talked really fast and she read the story to us. And then she, she like uh, asked me a question and I couldn't answer it. And she was like, who else wasn't paying attention like Maria? <laughs> and that's when I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I guess she just, she was calling me out for not paying attention, but the truth was that I just, I couldn't understand English, so I would like zone her out and I would like <laughs> fidget with my hand or like do something else. And to her or like to anyone else seeing me, like it did look like I was distracted or not paying attention. But that's the first time I felt like I want to not be here right now. <laughs> it's so interesting that you remember that. Why do you think you remember? Because I think the feeling was just so strong and that moment really stuck with me. I think after that day, I was like, oh my God, I need to work on my English because I'm never putting myself in that position again. I feel like one thing that always helps me um, just kind of get this feeling of embarrassment, just like be un all unbothered about it, it's just, I will literally never remember the last embarrassing moment of someone, like I'm not gonna remember someone raising their hand in class and saying the wrong answer so confidently. It's just like, why would you bother yourself with that kind of information? So to me, it's just that whatever embarrassing moment I think I've had, I know that no one will remember it. And I'm just like, whatever, like, so what if I fall in front of a large crowd? <laughs> it's just, no one's gonna remember it. And if you just laugh at yourself, people will be laughing with you, not at you. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, like, it is human nature to be self-centered and we we sort of assume that everyone's watching our every move, but everyone's just focused on themselves. Like, no one, no one's thinking about what you're doing as intensely as you're thinking about what you're doing, about Definitely. your actions. And I feel like we've covered this in our last episode, if you've watched it. Um, Shout out to our fans that have. I feel like there will be a lot of repetitive themes um, along our episodes. It's just about like mental health and all about mindfulness. But you are so focused on your own self. You will not remember anyone's, anyone's failures, anyone's embarrassing moments, their worst time periods or whatever. You just... So whatever you have gone through that, has, that makes you shrivel up 
and cringe whatever you think about it just know that it's going to be okay and no one's going to remember and even if someone like if it was a big moment in front of a lot of people large audience and someone remembers that they are not laughing at you they're just kind of laughing with you like they're not thinking about it and like i cannot believe what she did that was actually disgusting like if i was her i would actually <laughs> never <laughs> leave my house again they are not thinking about it this way they just think about it that was so funny <laughs> But it also really depends on how you carry yourself. Like if someone points out your embarrassing moment and you're like, you like cry about it, people are gonna keep bringing it up. Yeah. But if you're like, yeah, that happened, whatever, I'm gonna laugh at it and move on. And you should move on as well, because yeah, it's, mad. it's not that big. It's not that honestly. Big. And like you determine what is a big deal to you. And I think that applies to every single aspect of our life. Like if you think this exam is a big deal, you're gonna spend time studying for it. If you think that what happened to you was such a big deal, you're gonna spend a lot of time thinking about it. But if you if you just if you just let it go, if you're like, it's not it's not that deep. Yeah, it's not that deep. <laughs> and you just move on. Like you forget about it and. I won't, it won't matter. I think one of the main factors why, like when you're older, you just like, you don't care, you're unbothered, is when you're young, like to me, when I'm thinking back, when I was in year seven, for example, every single thing was embarrassing. Like I was embarrassed to go up in front of the class and write an answer on the board. Like I don't understand, I can't understand why everything was just so humiliating to me, but I like one of my theories is just that when you're so young you don't have a strong sense of self so anyone's words or actions or behavior towards you just defines you like if someone laughs at me i'm just gonna say i'm so embarrassing i'm so cringy like this is that mm -hmm. and you just like you haven't developed and found out who you are yet so every every word everything you hear about yourself every action or behavior towards you defines you which is so sad to think about but if you're at this stage of life i can reassure you it gets so much better but yeah and i feel like i actually think that applies to any stage of your life like if you have low self-esteem and if you are so uh deeply bothered about how people perceive you and what they think about you then these little things are going to affect you like how you how you sort of carry yourself around people and your actions they're gonna really really play a toll on you like you're gonna think so you're, gonna, you're just gonna keep overthinking about what what you do yeah and if you don't like have that strong sense of self don't stop overthinking your actions being like oh my god i hate myself i can't believe i did that because you're not even being yourself like how can you hate yourself when you're just faking whatever personality you have throughout the day how did you sort of overcome that feeling of embarrassment? I think to me, like as I got older, my priorities differed. Um, like I don't care as much what, how people would perceive me. For example, if I was having a bad hair day in year seven or eight, it would be like, it's just my whole day is over because that's all I'm thinking about. Like my hair looks so bad right now. I can't believe, I don't want Are people to see me. I mean, I wouldn't say that to that extent. Maybe, I'll, I'll say maybe. <laughs> It's okay, like if you're that emotional about, I think your appearance as well is like a big part of your identity because that's what everyone sees, like anyone who's, who doesn't personally know you, that's what they see. So I guess it's a really anxiety and anxiety filling kind of topic, but like I cared, I cared so much about how people perceived me. And that, but then at this stage of life, I would say, I just, I don't care. Like if you think, if you think I'm stupid, if you think whatever, it just doesn't matter. I have my exams to worry about. This is what I'm talking about, like for priorities. I'm just, I just care more about other things that, um, things that embarrass me so much, just, they just don't matter as much. And whenever I still, obviously as a human, I still have a lot of embarrassing moments and things I said that I'm like, why did I do that? Or why did I say that? And it's so, it makes me cringe to think about, but like, I think I still feel cringed out by some of my actions, yet I just, I'm not as bothered by them. How about you? I think just coming to terms with the fact that this is my life, I only have one life, and if I live it 
hyper focused on every little tiny mistake that I make, then I'm not going to live a fulfilling life. I'm not going to be happy. I'm not going to be satisfied with myself. And that is definitely not a way to live. Yeah. And one thing we've been telling ourselves for the last two years, like you're 12 and 13, whatever something bad happens to us, we're just like, it's not a deep. And I feel like that helps like words of affirmation, affirming yourself and saying, I don't care about this. It's not that deep helps way more than you think I can't even begin I feel like I could do a whole separate episode on this but just affirm just keep telling yourself it is not that deep and it's just the whole fake it till you make it personality like keep saying it's not that deep and then suddenly you're just okay and I would say like it doesn't disappear overnight though I don't want so I don't want to give someone false hope it takes years I would say I mean not years it really depends on the person but it's just you get over it. Trust Something me. you practice, like practice definitely makes perfect and that also applies to your mindsets. Yeah. So try to train like those healthy mindsets. And one thing Marion keeps doing is rejection therapy. She does <laughs> stuff. She does stuff. She knows people will say no or will, they will be weirded out by what she's saying or what she's doing, but she's just laughing. It's like, she thinks that's why I'm doing this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, for example, we had our rap in an assembly about HBL, which to think about, it is so cringy. <laughs> like at the beginning, our initial reaction to that rap thing, we were the ones that suggested it, like um, the leadership team. And our initial reaction, I noticed that there was a shift between the attitude towards that rap. At the beginning, we we're also like, oh my God, I can't believe we're doing this. this is so to think about like it was, <laughs> it was actually um, I remember thinking about it at the beginning and I wanted to throw up because I was so nervous like why am I going in front of people and rapping about HBL it's, it was uh, such a nerve-wracking experience but then we went up there and a lot of people liked it and it went really well actually like we did something that's so embarrassing I know we're gonna look back at this and cringe at ourselves but like it's a fun experience and we got to live like we lived we're just living our lives yeah and also a huge part of it was confidence because people know people know when you when you are embarrassed people know when you're not you know in it fully when when you're sort of ashamed of what you're doing yeah. but if you go up on stage and do something you know i guess spontaneous with confidence People will applaud you. People will like feel the energy. And I also want to elaborate on rejection therapy. Let me let me break it down. <laughs> so the the idea is that you put yourself in small situations where you know you're gonna get a no, where you know you're gonna get rejected. And that way, it could be like really, really tiny, dumb situations like asking someone to buy me a coffee, knowing that they may say no, because that then will like if when I want to like chase bigger goals, I will go out of my way and do it anyway. Like regardless of failure being an option, because like I've grown, like I've become anti-fragile to it. I've sort of become resistant to the idea of like being rejected. I love what she said because um, like adding on to that, whenever you get no, you feel this same sense of failure and shame. But you should not be ashamed of getting rejected it's just it's part of life and then whenever you're moving like small rejections at the beginning and then whenever you're moving on like for example right now we're at the stage where we're applying to unis and you might not get into your desired uni and the rejection if you have not if you've never been rejected before it feels so bad terrible mm -hmm. so a little homework for our audience for the people watching this Put yourself in these situations deliberately. Try rejection therapy and let us know how it goes. Comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> I know the comments are turned off, but um, <laughs> if you see us at school, please come up to us and tell us what you thought about this episode. And thank you so much for listening. See you again. Bye.